Well, hello there, my dear friends. Welcome back to the Scott Reed Project. Now, today, something a little different. So, I'm down on a farm. This is a home killed beast. They had a tup that was surplus to requirements, and they asked me if I would butcher it. Now, we butcher it exactly the same way as we would a lamb, you know, or mutton. The only thing is with this, it's got some bad press because it's a tup, a male. Some people say it's got a really, really strong flavour. But what I want to do is break this down and we're going to cook a bit to see what the crack is. So, as per usual, I'm going to break this into primals. So it's a little bit more manageable to work with. Now a lot of people say the best thing for this is stews and casseroles. Now normally I would count down these ribs to get here, but this is a bigger beast and I know we're going to hit the tip of the blade bones. Perfect. I mean it's absolutely ginormous to think. So we're going to take off the legs. So just peeling that breast back. Search for that vertebra. And join it. So, as per usual, we're going to split the legs through that hip bone. What an absolute monster this is. Take off those chumps. There's quite a lot of fat on this one, as you can imagine, with the age. So just trimming some of it off so we can find a clear path. Straight across, cut. As you can see, it's quite a dense muscle. I'm just going to take some of that fat off there. Let's have a look at it. So, yeah, it's, it's definitely a tougher muscle. But I suppose time will tell. I know in all the old books they say it's all stews and casseroles. It doesn't smell any stronger than a normal lamb. I'm going to leave that like that. So that is what we got leg wise. Just nip through this one. Not the best confirmation. Like I said, this was surplus to requirements, so. Through again. Yeah, this has got a really, really poor back leg. See there, look, if you look at the one, look at the other. And there's the difference in those fillets. But better this than it just going to the kennels. Let's see what these. 
chumps come out like. Perfect. So I'm just trimming off some of that excess fat. I can go over there. So as you can see, it looks the part over on that pile, next one, so I just got my knife really close up to the bone there and you start to open it up and then just with the tip of the knife we're going under where we cut that hip bone, the H bone, pelvic bone, whatever you want to call it, to separate our leg. Just take that off. This is that better half. So yeah, I mean they look absolutely beautiful. I actually put that one on, it's big enough to keep there. So look at that for a front end. Just look at the eye of that meat. And there we've hit the tips of the blade bone. My God, it's massive. Real, real thick neck, as you would expect. So I'm just gonna cut into that neck. It's just mad. So I'm going to just take the tips of these breasts off, thread my saw through that front leg, just nip one off. So just roughly marking them. Saw through into the armpit. Okay, let's have a look at this bad boy. Let's take one of these off. So, just tracing down as per usual. <clears throat> one side of the ribs. Keeping that knife right up close. We join up with the neck. Then we can angle our knife to pick up that eye of the meat here. See if I can show you this on this big bugger. So, and it's just a case of chipping away at this now. Tuck it right in there and just start to loosen it and it should pretty much start to fall like this, it's beautiful and there is one massive shoulder, repeat with this side. Steer it round that eye of the meat.
There is shoulder number two. Just do the usual trim up. Remove the paddy whack. And what I'm going to do with this is take off those front shanks, the hocks, as you can see there. That looks a bit more presentable. I'm just going to cut the shoulders in half. repeat with the other side my god it's taking up all my block man just taking that front hock off and the thing with these home kills as I've said in many of my videos normally when a lamb is killed in a slaughterhouse you can imagine that's the shoulder they would put a band around its neck and while it was still soft push the shoulder through and this would bring it all up and you get a better shape but obviously with own kill you do what you got to do man taking that paddy whack out of this side a big knob of fat And then we'll split her again. <coughs> so it's starting to look not too bad, you know, there's your shoulders. Right, these breasts, straight into mince. No mucking about, so very simple. Just trimming it off. Just take some of that fat out. You can see the thickness of the fat now. You have a look at that. You know, that's a hell of a piece of fat. That's one. Get a grip on it. And again, we're just going to repeat. Trimming off any excess, any mince worthy meat off our trim. It goes there, it goes in the bin. Just quickly nip through these shanks, front shanks, hocks, whatever you want to call them. Nice and simple. Classic. Butchery. Down one side, down to the side. I mean, a good way is you could just take them off in two lumps like that. By the time you've loosened it, we're done. What to do with this bloody great neck? I know the guy who asked me to butcher these wants quite a bit of mince. 
So I'm just roughly going to take off what would be the neck fillets if you were to bone it out. I mean, I love neck rings, but he isn't into that kind of thing. So just slash job. Trim off any excess fat. Let's have a look at the thickness of those. Wow, they would make good stewing steaks, wouldn't they? Casserole in. Awesome. They are awesome, look at those. So all we're left with then, is this massive loin. So what we're gonna to do to make it more manageable, first of all, is we're going to just take these breasts off. And we can trim up when we have a look at the loin. Actually I'm going to go a little bit smaller so I'll go there. What do you reckon about there? Yeah. And straight across. It's just a massive piece of meat. So let's remove the suet and the kidney. Just push in with your thumb and easing it with the knife. Just ride it along the backbone. Same towards the front end. Okay, what to do with this? I'm going to just take out the tips of the blade bone. So either side with the knife. Very simple. And once you loosen it, one, two, let's take that bit of muscle with it actually be a bit of a ball ache. Right. So I'm going to look for where the actual loin chops end, which is this end with the tenderloin in. And I'm just going to mark that vertebra. Then I'm going to ride down that rib and join that marking cut. And I'm going to do the same with the other side and join that marking cut over the edge of the block. Give it a snap. And we can join up the cuts properly. We should pretty much be able to Snap through it in our way. My favourite part of any lamb, peeling these kidneys out. It's really weird when I've cut hundreds of lambs and then you cut something like this and the scale is so much bigger. It makes it easier. Smell of that. So he's a little stronger smelling than a normal lamb. Being a male that wasn't castrated, you know, it's all about the hormones. But yeah, 
So we've got our best end and our loin end before we tackle them. I just want to put these breasts to bed. Not being too fussy here, it's all going to mince. So just exposing the bone. It's big enough to cut that off. And down the ribs. Just to take off. Covering a muscle. Right, just take any excess off. And that's ready to be minced. Right, all that's left are those loins. So what we want to do, he loves his chops. So straight down the spine backbone. So using the tip of the steel, take out the remainder of the spine. Great old school trick that. Then with your cloth, just remove the bone dust. And then we need an old knife. One that you don't love too much. And we're going in between each vertebra to give us these. So heel of the knife on top. Might be a bit too big to do the old school knife. Hand on the front, push down and forward. Oh, we got it. Line again, nicely mined out. So let's try that method. So you knife in, if you look, I've got it quite high, hand on the front, down and forwards. Beautiful. There's going to be times when it just won't go through. Can we get this last one? Perfect. Just trim that up, and there we have our loin chops. They've got a good thickness to them but I don't know how they're going to eat, obviously. Right, do the cutlets and the job is a good one. So we're on to the final piece of the puzzle, this loin end. So what I'm going to do first is just loosen it off the top. So just down those feather bones just releasing the loin and then nice and tight gently sawing hear that change pitch then join where we loosened it. So 
the one side, that's the second side. Now, still for my liking, a lot of rib. So just go across. Can always mark it. Just removing the last of that paddy whack. This to the mints. quite fatty bits there so just quickly trim we'll have a look at these beauties Right. So as you know, I can't help myself. I'm going to square it up. And then cut some nice cutlets by just going through them like that. Square that end up. Beautiful looking things. Wonderful cutlets. Right, we need to get one of these in the pan and see what the deal is. Beautiful looking thing now, you cannot deny that. Okay then, let's see what all the fuss is about. I've never eaten tup before, which is obviously a ram, uncastrated, so the old books say it's going to taste really strong. We shall soon find out. So all I'm doing is warming my pan up. I'm going to try and hit this with a high heat. Try and do it a bit medium. Normally, as I said in the video, this would all go for diced casserole stews, things like that. But I'm going to give it a whirl. I mean, when you prepare meat, you can actually smell the meat. I know that sounds a bit mad, but some of you might understand what I'm saying. And Coops, obviously home killed this. He said, oh, I think it will be a bit strong. But I'll be honest with you, it just smells of lamb. But I imagine it's all to do with the taste. So, warm in my pan up. Season nicely. I mean, they look fantastic, don't they? Hey, what a picture that is. And we'll just get them in there and slowly, slowly catch you, monkey.
So I'm just going to add a spot of oil to that side. Rub it in, baby. Again, just simple seasoning. And I imagine when we turn these over, these are going to just look the picture of sexiness. Oh, beautiful. And what I will do is I will stand them up on that fat, start rendering a bit of that fat out, get it nice and crispy. So far, so good. They have cooked up really nicely. They absolutely look wonderful, don't they? I know this is a bit silly, but just gauging. That is perfect. If the fat alone is anything to go by, they're gonna be stunning. So as they say, the proof is in the pudding or should that be lamb chop let's have a go on this beauty so sauteed or pan fried really really hot i'll gnaw on that bone in a minute oh look at that Okay, smells perfect. Wow, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Just got a little bit more texture, but the taste, no different. Mm. So my favorite steak has always been rump steak. And for that reason is fillet steak, I know a lot of people love it. To me, it's overrated. It costs way too much money for what it is. But what it's lacking is one, flavour, because there's no fat. But two, is texture, that mouthfeel. When I eat a steak, I want to have a bit of integrity. I want it to have some texture. And this is the epitome of that ethos flavour. Wow. Wow. Just amazing texture, got a little bit of bite. Mm, that's a win-win, baby. So, that's the top done. It does, in all fairness, look amazing. So, we've got our bowl of mints, well, our trim, or mints in ground. Those fantastic cutlets, the loin chops, those shoulders in half, the legs, there's that dodgy leg there, chump chops, and our kidneys. And that is it. So if you've liked what you've seen here today on the SRP, please click subscribe when my face comes up down here in the corner. Also, you know the drill, check me out on my social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at the Scott Reed Project. So until next time, my friends, take care.